Sen de. Testing, testing. Okay. Testing one, two, three. Test one, two, three.
dear friends in Christ, in the name of Jesus, and of his church, we gather to pray for Aden, that God may bring him to everlasting peace and rest. We share the pain of loss, but the promise of eternal life gives us hope. Let us comfort one another with these words. We believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. Our Lord comes to raise the dead and comforts us with the solace of his love. Let us praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Word of God, creator of the earth, to which Aden will return in baptism you called him to eternal life, to praise your Father, Lord, have mercy. Son of God, you raise up the just and clothe them with the glory of your kingdom. Christ, have mercy. Crucified Lord, you protect the soul of Aden by the power of your cross. And on the day of your coming, you will show mercy to all the faithful departed. Lord, have mercy. Judge of the living and the dead, at your voice, the tombs will open and all the just who sleep in your peace will rise and sing the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. With faith and hope, we pray to the Father in the words Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Lord, in our grief we turn to you. Are you not the God of love who open our ears to all? Listen to our prayers for your servant Aden, whom you have called out of this world. Lead him to your kingdom of light and peace and count him among the saints in glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord, And let us now proceed to the church for celebrating the Eucharist.
May the Father of mercies, the God of all consolation, give you comfort and peace, and may the Lord be always with you. In the waters of baptism, Aden died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share the glory and eternal happiness. Amen. Let us proceed.
May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. May Christ, who claimed Aden in baptism, now enfold him in his love and bring him to eternal life. In baptism, Aden received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Let us pray. Most compassionate God, you, in the counsel of your wisdom, have called this young boy to yourself on the very threshold of life. Listen to our prayers and grant that one day we may inherit life with him, whom by the grace of baptism you have adopted as your own child, and who we believe is dwelling even now in your kingdom. Through Christ our Lord Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honourable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understanding, this is man's grey hairs. Untarnished life, this is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. He has been carried off so that evil may not warp his understanding or treachery seduce his soul. For the fascination of evil throws good things into the shade, and the whirlwind of desire corrupts a simple heart. Coming to perfection in so short a while, he achieved long life, his soul being pleasing to the Lord. He has taken him up quickly from the wickedness around him. Yet people look on, uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection, his holy ones. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. 
The response is, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. Response. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these, you give me comfort. The Response. Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Response. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Response. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I will tell you something that has been secret, that we are not all going to die, but we shall all be changed. This will be instantaneous in the twinkling of an eye, when the last trumpet sounds. It will sound, and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we shall be changed as well, because our present perishable nature must put on imperishability, and this mortal nature must put on immortality. When this perishable nature has put on imperishability, and when this mortal nature has put on immortality, then the words of Scripture will come true. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Now the sting of sin is death, and sin gets its power from the law. So let us thank God for giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Praise, Praise and, and honor, honor to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On arriving at Bethany, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. Bethany is only two miles from Jerusalem. 
and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to sympathize with them over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. <clears throat> Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In moments like this, we are at a loss. How can a loving God let this happen? If we are believers, there is certainly one moment in the Gospels that brings us to the same situation. Mary at Golgotha, the disciples at Golgotha, but especially Mary. Here is her son, the promised one, the one who was born in a special way. She did not understand it, Joseph even less. And great things were said about him. But it took a long, long time, 30 years, before Jesus started his ministry. And Mary was at a loss, but she was still hoping that what was promised to her would happen. And there she is, at the foot of the cross. Her son, Jesus, the beloved one, the promised one was put to death cruelly. And when he died, he was taken down from the cross. We have this image of the Pieta, Jesus with the corpse of her son on her lap. I'm sure Mary, too, must have had these thoughts. My God, my God, why have you forsaken us, my son and me, your son? This is also what we feel today. My God, my God, why have you forsaken us? But even though that feeling, too, is real. In faith we know the Lord has not forsaken us. The Lord has not forsaken Aden. On the contrary, he has called Aden to him. Just as he had called his son Jesus back to him. Jesus who said, I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, you will even, if you die, you don't really die. Eden lives on in the love of God and in our fond memories, 
But it's not just a feeling. We truly believe that Eden has been called to the fullness of life. And that the short time that he was entrusted to his parents to care for, he has been, yes, a responsibility, not an easy responsibility, but at the same time, a blessing. A blessing for them, which they fulfilled so well, so much in an exemplary way. We pray for them and we say, Aden, pray for us. Amen. Please rise for the general intercession. With confidence, let us pray to God the Father Almighty, who raised them, the dead, his only Son, Jesus Christ. For Aden, child of God, and heir to the kingdom, that he be held securely in God's loving embrace now and for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Aden's family, especially his mother, Isabel, and father, Lawrence, that they feel the healing power of Christ in the midst of their pain and grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who cared for Aden, that they be consoled in their loss and strengthened in their love for one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all parents who grieve over the death of their children, that they be comforted by the knowledge that their children dwell with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For children who have died of hunger and disease, that these little ones be seated close to the Lord at his heavenly table. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For children who have, for the whole church, that we prepare worthily for the hour of our death, when God will call us by name to pass from the world to the next, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Lord God, you entrusted Aidan to the care of Lawrence and Isabel, and now you take him to yourself. How difficult to relinquish our charge. How difficult to trust in your ways. Take Aidan into your care and comfort us, your sorrowing servants who seek to do your will and to know your saving peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become a spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, we beseech you, have mercy, that Aden, who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior, may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned. That those saddened by the certainty of death may be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, Lord, for your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we extol the hymn of your glory without end, as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the highest. Blessed, blessed is he who come. comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Aidan, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was, who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Aidan, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, and, and the glory, glory are yours, yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, Lord, but look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Name of God. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you that should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. know that communion is for baptized Catholics only.
Let us pray. Please stand. Lord God, your son left us in the sacrament of his body and blood, food for the journey. Mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Aidan may come to the eternal joy in the table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. pause a while in silence to pray and recall what Aden has been for us, what we had in common and experienced together, and what he is now for God. As a sign of respect for our brother Aden, may this incense surround his body and go up to God with our prayer. seated for the eulogy.
Dinayal. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, in case you're wondering, uh, the psalm that was played was a favorite psalm of Aden, and we thought we played for him uh, in his memory. So, uh, I'm uh, Aden's godfather, and uh, on behalf of Aden's father, he's requested me to deliver this eulogy on his behalf. And uh, I'm going to try to reflect what he has put in two words to the best of my ability. Aidan Jerome was a boy with mammoth character and vigor. From a tender age, he grew rapidly, gaining much knowledge of this world. Aidan was gracious and cared a lot about others, putting them before self and especially towards his parents. He loved others just as Jesus had loved us. He was God-loving and, delivered and developed a close relationship with the Lord. When Aidan was just a toddler, he was diagnosed with an aggressive cancer type. From that time, Aidan went through tremendous treatments in the hope of finding a remedy for his illness. During this time, it brought a lot of people coming together, putting in prayers, resources, time and love to save this child. Aidan braced each moment with courage, vigour and determination to live each day and make them count. He didn't let his illness beat him down, getting back up each time. After a five-plus-year battle, without much treatment options available, his cancer caught up with him, and that was the start of his demise. Over the last five days, so many people have come forward to pay their respects to Aidan as we mourn the loss of our dear beloved son, Aidan. We have felt the love and support of a great community that Aidan has gained over the course of his life. I am sure Aidan will now want you all to continue living well, making the best of your precious life that God has given to you. Aidan has now turned into an angel, and he's with the Lord. He left this earth in the company of family and friends. His death was full of hope, full of promise, and fragrant with innocence. And that's not a bad way in which to pass on. Besides, we know this little boy went straight to the kingdom of heaven. We have Christ's word for that. So we know he's in a better place. There will be no more pain or suffering for him. The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing I shall want. His grace is sufficient for us, for His power is made perfect in weakness. I'll just now say a few words uh, on behalf of my wife and I, who are His godparents. As godparents, we too had witnessed that Aidan indeed had a close relationship with the Lord with the fruits of the Holy Spirit quite evident in Aidan's short but fulfilling life. Aidan may have been small in appearance, but he had a large and generous heart. He loved his family fiercely and faithfully, despite the challenges of his long-drawn illness. His love for his dad was marked by his deep respect and obedience to him as his primary caregiver. Aidan often witnessed firsthand his father challenging doctors to chase down every glimmer of hope to fight for that elusive cure. So it was truly a poignant moment to behold that Aidan took his last breath only after his dad gave him his blessing to surrender to the Lord after a long and hard fight. Aidan loved his mom no less often watching her juggle 
his caregiving needs with the stresses of work. In some of his darkest days in hospital, it was his mother that he seek comfort in to lie beside him on his hospital bed, even if it was for a brief moment before making way for more tests and strong treatment to be administered to him. Despite his young age and suffering the pain of treatment and its after effects, his goodness shone brightly through when he often volunteered to play the role of peacemaker between his parents when caregiving needs and life pressures stretched them emotionally and physically. In addition, he was the model child. He was often kind and exercised great self-control to make time to visit extended family and God family at the encouragement of his parents who bestowed on him the importance of family ties. He did these visits to the best of his ability to appear positive despite not feeling physically too good from the after effects of multiple chemo cycles and radiation visits to the hospital. Finally, Aidan never lamented over his plight but patiently carried his cross with full trust in the Lord's providence each day. On his short-lived life, we can truly say he found joy in little blessings that came his way, such as having the strength to make it for a full week of school, enjoying playtime with his siblings, or tucking into home-cooked meals prepared by his dad, which gave him immense joy i like to end my eulogy in sharing this scripture verse and how it has come alive for us through the witness of Aden's beautiful life. In Luke chapter 18, verses 15 to 17, we read, People were bringing even infants to Jesus, that he may touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked him. They rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him, saying, Let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belong the kingdom of God. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. Thank you, dear Aidan, for being such a, such a beautiful child to your parents, godparents, and many other families you have touched with your loving ways through all your pain and suffering. Godpa and Godma will always love you and we will miss you deeply. But we take heart knowing that you can finally enjoy your eternal rest in paradise with Jesus and our Blessed Mother. Aidan, we will meet again at the heavenly banquet. Thanks. Let us now turn to the Lord by thinking of Aden as we pray. May he live with you, Lord. May he live with you, you Lord. Lord. That Aden may know forever the joy and peace of your presence, we pray. May, may he, he live, live with, with you, you, Lord. Lord. That Aden may now at last enjoy the full vision of God's glory, we pray. We may, may he live with you, Lord. That Christ may welcome him with all those who have gone before us, we pray. May he live with you, Lord. That he may now share the happiness of all those who died in God's friendship, we pray. May he live with you, Lord. And may his remembrance bring us closer to the Lord, we pray. May he live with you, Lord. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Aidan, in the sure and certain hope that, together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. 
we give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Aden in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother Aidan forever. Amen. Amen. At a sufficient distance I will now sing. It's in Latin. It's a 1,500 years old. I sang it for my dad and in 1974 he passed on. And the text says, May the choirs of angels exhort you into paradise. Note, this is the only text really where it speaks of you. Usually we say him, her, the deceased. Here it says you. At your arrival, may the martyrs receive and welcome you. May they bring you home into the holy city, Jerusalem. May the holy angels with joy welcome you, and with Lazarus, who lived in poverty, may you have eternal rest. In paradisum de tu cante angeli, in tuo adventu suscipiante martires, et perducante in civitatem sanctam Jerusalem. Colus angelorum te suscipiant, et cum lazaro quondam paupere eterna. Am habeas requiem.
Every person standing 